Thank you, Martin. A pleasant day to all of you, my fellow refugees in wisdom. As I was writing this welcome address for the very first international conference on the French philosopher, Emmanuel Levinas, here in the Philippines, I came to reflect on the meaning of the term conference. It is indeed a word that is very rich in philosophical and social context, which we sometimes neglect. The term appears in Latin, French, and English. It comes from the Latin verb confere, which means to bring together. But it is enriched by the French conférence, that is, the act of conferring. While the equivocal English confer means to talk something over or to grant a title to someone. There are therefore three elements of a conference. First is that we bring ourselves together in one venue. Second, that we need to indulge ourselves in conversation. And third, that we readily grant each other our open ears and minds. The term conference, moreover, shares the Latin prefix con, which means with. And with the term converse, uh, it shares the, the prefix con with the term conversation, so conference, conversation. As the Latin conversare means to keep company with which is further romanticized in the French word conversat as to live among or to become familiar with. Therefore, a gathering such as a conference has a deeply ethical character. And I mean ethical in a profoundly Levinasian sense. In totality and infinity, Levinas says, and I quote, the face is a living presence. It is, an, it is expression. The face speaks. The manifestation of the face is already discourse. End of quote. In this conference, then, we gather ourselves together as faces, familiar or otherwise, but ultimately other. We realize the social significance of a conference, and I dare say radically, because such an encounter punctures the confines of an insular individuality. Or to put it in the, in the plain words of Levinas, I quote again, the face of the other at each moment destroys and overflows the plastic image it leaves me. The idea existing to my own measure, it expresses itself, end of, end of quote. We do not only bring ourselves together, but more radically, we encounter one another as forces of difference, to borrow an insight from Dieu de Deux. If there is anything I learned from Levinas, it is the imperative to respond to the other, which I think means to pay attention to the other. Moreover, as faces, we encounter each other in our most basic element, that is to say, as visceral living presences. Only upon this encounter can we build our ethics and politics. The face, Levinas writes, I quote, he says, the face opens the primordial discourse whose first word is obligation. The face speaks to me and thereby invites me to a relation, end of quote. This conference is thus a gathering of actual bodies of singularities and not of mere ideas. Inspired by something I recently learned over dinner from our esteemed guest speaker, Father Rodrier Rodrave, I would say that this conference is a gathering of humans and not of angels. As the latter is not capable of the sense of touch and neither is the latter capable of feeling suffering. Being ethical, therefore, is ultimately a human, all to human experience. Now, Levinas is, of course, not only good for some random musing on the nature of conferences. Uh, the variety of topics that could be discussed through, with, or against Levinas is proven in the list of papers that you see in the conference program. 
many of the present presentations that you will listen to ju will justify Dr. Leovino Garcia's claim that Levinas is the kind of philosopher that we need today in the Philippines. Obviously, Dr. Garcia says, says this against a backdrop of the current status of Philippine society and politics. This, because we know that despite the overwhelming popularity of our president, Rodrigo Duterte, and his promise to rid the country of criminality through his war on illegal drugs, his administration is haunted by the specter of the violation of human rights because of the increasing cases of what his critics call extrajudicial killings. Corollary to these are the issues of the revival of the death penalty law and the growing anxiety over the declaration of martial law in Mindanao, probably for the country. And these are, of course, very complex and sensitive issues. They involve our appeal to not only our jurid juridical resources, but also to philosophical, religious, and scientific resources, not to mention plain common sense. But perhaps what compelled Dr. Garcia to say that we need Levinas is the fact that Levinas offers us an alternative model of ethics that radically appeals to the other. Levinas emphatically declares in Ethics and Infinity, and I quote, the face is what forbids us to kill. End of quote. If the face is what forbids us to kill, Levinas therefore is offering us an ethical model whose notion of justice appeals neither to religious dogma nor juridical reason, but to something prior to religion and law. Levinas' model, which appeals to the face-to-face -face encounter that puts my privileged position into question, is a radical alternative to perhaps the Duterte government's appeal to desperation. However, I wish not to preempt the discussions that will follow, so I will leave it to the conference presenters, to you, to debate on these issues. Now, before I end this welcome address, I wish to express, because I will not have a chance later on, I wish to express my profound gratitude to the people and, of, and, and offices uh, uh, that help us. Thank you to the conference convener, Dr. Lovino Garcia, for teaching us Levinas and for inspiring us to organize this con conference. Father uh, uh, Rodier Bergrave, our esteemed guest speaker, all the way from the Faculty of Theology and Religious Studies of the Catholic University at Leuven, for graciously accepting our invitation. Professor Dr. Michael Anthony Vasco, the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Letters, for his generosity and full support. The core organizing committee, headed by Dr. Flor Delis Altes Albella and the other core members, Mr. Rainier Albergania, Mr. Jaco Bellio, and Ms. Elaine Lazaro, and also to the mem all the members of our various subcommittees. Uh, the Faculty of Arts and Letters staff and my staff of the Department of Philosophy, thank you. I also would like to express my gratitude to the ecclesiastical faculties and the Father's residence for providing accommodation uh, the, uh, providing the accommodation of our guest speaker. And uh, if he's here, special thanks to Father Rodel Aligan, who will be for uh, pr uh, um, graciously welcoming our guests. I also wish to express my appreciation to the Director's Office, the Office of the Secretary General, and the Public Affairs Office. Finally, my friends, welcome to the Philippines and welcome to the University of Santo Tomas. I thank you for joining us today and I do hope that you will be able to indulge yourselves in conversation. Lend your ears and minds as we confer for three days. It is my hope that through this gathering we would be able to recognize one another as visceral faces and be inspired by Levinas so that we would be able to build new bridges and extend old ones. A pleasant day once again. Thank you, Dr. Altes and Bella, for mapping probably the whole three-day conference. So, 
Uh, two years ago, Dr. Garcia actually convened an international conference on Recur. No? And after two years, uh, here we are again with Dr. Leo Garcia. But uh, now that uh, last uh, two years ago, he was actually the last speaker. But today, he will be our first speaker. So, and we are also lucky to lucky to welcome with us uh, our former faculty and now a scholar of, of University of Tulu, who will introduce our first keynote uh, speaker. Let's also welcome uh, Peter Mara. Um, distinguished guests, uh, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, pleasant morning. I am Peter Mara of, uh, I'm still a faculty here, <laughs> not former, um, uh, of uh, the USC Department of Philosophy and I'll be your session moderator for the keynote lecture to be delivered by uh, Dr. Leo Garcia this morning. But before we begin, um, let me remind everyone of the format of this uh, plenary session. Um, this will be good for an hour and a half, which includes a 30 minute uh, question and answer because it's all about the introduction of uh, the vocabulary. So as to clarify many things, um, we'll be allotting a longer session, uh, question and answer, open forum, towards which is uh, included al already towards the end of uh, the session. Um, the speaker will be uh, constantly reminded of uh, the remaining time in keeping with the conference schedule. Um, should there be any questions and clarifications from uh, the audience, kindly address uh, respectfully uh, your concern. And after introducing yourself, of course, and your institutional affiliation, um, and be uh, direct to the point, in order to entertain more uh, participants during the open forum. And immediately after, there will be a short 15 minute uh, coffee break, snacks, uh, before we continue, before we move on to uh, the first parallel sessions. Okay, without further ado, let us proceed to the keynote session for this uh, morning. To introduce the speaker, Dr. Uh, Jovino Maria Garcia uh, is the country's leading scholar on the philosophies of Paul Ricoeur and Emmanuel Levinas. Um, he graduated with an AB Humanities degree, cum laude, from uh, the Ateneo de Manila University in 1965. He obtained a uh, doctorate in philosophy, mania cum laude, with a dissertation on uh, Paul Ricoeur from the French-speaking Catholic Univers uh, Université Catholique de Louvain in uh, Belgium in uh, 1981. Uh, his field of expertise is contemporary French philosophy, especially the philosophies of Ricoeur and Emmanuel Levinas. Dr. Garcia has applied Ricoeur's hermeneutics in the interpretation of contemporary Philippine paintings and antique maps. In 1988, he became the first lay dean of School of Arts and Sciences of the Ateneo de Manila University, serving for two terms until 1994. He also became the first dean of the Loyola School of Humanities of the Ateneo from 2000 to 2007. He served as uh, president of the Philosophy Circle of the Philippines from 1985 to 1988, president of the PEP, Philosophical Association of the Philippines from 1988 to 1998, that's 10 years, and the president of the Asian Association of Catholic Philosophers from uh, 1992 to 1994. In 2004, at the World Congress of uh, Catholic, uh, Catholic University Institution of uh, Philosophy, or COMUCAP, in Mexico City, he was elected vice president for Asia. Through his initiatives and efforts, he organized a third uh, COMUCAP World Congress in Manila in September 2008. At the closing of this Congress, he was elected World President of the Communicap. 
First work in promoting cultural relations between France and the Philippines, Dr. Garcia was bestowed the ranks of Knight, Order of the Academic Palms in uh, 1989, and Officer, Order of Arts and Letters in 2008 by the French government. The Loyola Schools of the Ateneo de Manila University honored him with an Outstanding Senior Teacher Award in 2000 and the Lifetime Achievement in Humanities Award in 2007. In November 2012, he was bestowed the rank of Coma uh, Commander Order of uh, Leopold II by the uh, Belgian government. Uh, since 2008, he, was, he has been the chair of the Ateneo Art Auction Committee, which raises funds for the scholarship in the Ateneo de Manila's, uh, de Manila's School of Humanities. Last November 2015, Dr. Garcia convened uh, the International Conference on Paul Ricoeur with the theme, Paul Ricoeur in Asia, Reflections on Politics, Society, and Religion. The event was hosted by the University of Santo Tomas and uh, the Ateneo de Manila University in cooperation with the Philippine Academy, uh, Academy of uh, Philosophical Research and the Philosophical Association of the Philippines, Fon Ricoeur, and the Society of Ricoeur Studies. Uh, after almost two years, philosophy enthusiasts once again meet at this grand gathering an international conference on the philosophy of Emmanuel Levinas, convened by our dear Dr. Garcia, with theme uh, Levinas on social, political, philosophy, and beyond. Um, for his keynote lecture, titled uh, Understanding the Philosoph Philosophical Vocabulary of Emmanuel Levinas, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, let us listen to Dr. Jovino Maria Garcia. his birthday today, so it's a good omen, I think, uh, because he's also studying in France, which is celebrating fraternity, equality, and freedom tomorrow. Um, I have a lot to say here, so, and I do not know if I'm going to say everything, it's very difficult. So, uh, first of all, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. And um, I think I can begin by saying philosophy can kill, quotation marks, of course. Um, I almost got killed after visiting Emmanuel Levinas in 1989. Uh, unlike uh, Professor Bullgrave, I've only attended his 1976 lecture in Louvain on Martin Buber, and in 1989 I got the grant to to visit five philosophers uh, uh, to celebrate the bicentenary of France, and of course the first two philosophers I chose were naturally Ricoeur and Levinas, and. And so, um, normally they keep you for a respectful 15 minutes, but I think I almost stayed two hours, and maybe I was on cloud nine when I got out of his apartment on the Rue Michelange, and so I missed a step and got splattered on the pavement. Uh, so that's what I mean by philosophy can kill, but philosophy can kill also those who plan to kill, because uh, words have power. So my, uh, my work is very basic. I think it's quite important to understand uh, the vocabulary of Levinas, because he is trying to, to do a different kind of philosophy. Uh, and uh, 
Um, yes. Uh, I'll first talk on uh, he's he's of course a non-Cartesian philosopher. He's not a philosopher of the clear and distinct uh, because he's uh, he has what is called a logic of coexistence of ideas, notions, and terms. In other words, uh, it's not like a philosophy where ideas are subordinated in a kind of system. And so he speaks of an intrusion of ideas while he is discussing, I think this would be similar to when you are actively thinking. While you are thinking, you are visited by, by ideas which you don't anticipate. And that is why there is this encroachment or intrusion of ideas. Uh, and so uh, this is what is meant by the logic of the coexistence and intrusion of notions or ideas and therefore the, the logic of intrusion of his terms. And not only that, uh, this logic of the coexistence of one idea passing into the other is reinserted in a dynamic context, in a kind of a horizon, so that uh, while he is discussing an idea, he pushes the idea to such an extent that it breaks forth into a new idea, so that the, if you are not careful, uh, the ideas attains newer meaning as you keep reading and and therefore uh, yeah there is a kind of uh, uh, you must have a lot of patience I, I have a friend uh, an Indian Portuguese who did a dissertation on Levinas for 11 years I did mine only on recur for only eight years he beat me by three years. So you must be very, very patient because you must wait until the, the things fall into place. And so one must experience and experience, uh, really, ex you know, the levination experience is not just in your consciousness, but it is a going out. One must experience his texts in order to realize this is a different kind of philosopher. So there is a kind of a logic of ex exasperation. So, um, so I hope uh, you will understand that uh, even after many years of reading, it can happen that uh, you do not fully understand, but that's okay. That's what philosophers are. Uh, they take their time. Uh, but in, and so th there is this there is this play of uh, what Levinas will call the said what is said that what is written what is congealed what is be what is the saying what what is actually the saying so that uh, we must take care that. Uh, the saying does not congeal into the said and therefore we must watch out for the sparks of meaning that appear while, while we listen and while we read because I think it's a kind of a philosophy where through the said and the saying you get or you hear or you see the sparks of the meaning of the unsaid. This is what this is akin to what Father Faryols has said. Pagkatapos sabihin ang hat ng nasasabi hindi parin nasabi ang gusto ng sabihin. So, I, so that's the introduction. Uh, one way of understanding Levinas is, of course, uh, to begin with Heidegger, because we, we know that he went to uh, 
you, you went to uh, St uh, yes Strasbourg uh, to uh, to study philosophy, Strasbourg. but then he went to Freiburg uh, in Germany uh, to, because he wanted to study Husserl. But there he said he discovered Heidegger, and he was very enthusiastic about Heidegger. In fact. He planned to write the first book on Heidegger. Yeah, he wrote actually the first article in French on Heidegger. But then 1933 came. And of course you know what happened. Uh, Heidegger aligned himself with Nazism. And so that really perhaps broke Emmanuel Levinas. And, and so I think he began and in in 1935, he wrote a small, he wrote a monograph entitled De l'Evasion and translated as On Escape. And where he begins to say that it's not the forgetfulness of being, but it is the forgetfulness of the other in front of you. And so, he begins a very daring philosophy because he puts into question 2,500 years of the philosophy of being and yet he wants to stay philosophical. So how can one do a philosophy if one puts being into question? And so he says it's also naive to do philosophy without Heidegger. So how to do philosophy and how to do a philosophy not forgetting Heidegger but escaping from being. And so there is the uh, outline here. Uh, first you have being as being which is the focus of Heidegger. And so Levinas writes a book entitled From Existence to Existence. In other words, uh, the, the English title misses the whole point because it just they just entitle it existence and existence but the idea is one must go from being as being to the existent concrete beings the, especially the human being but then he says we must not forget Heidegger and I think the reason why he takes two steps backward to first step from being as being to being as a particular being and another step which is being without existence in other words uh, imagine that everything turns into nothing there's not really not nothing that also being but there is being there is existence without existence so and what he's trying to describe, to describe here, will be, uh, and what is it possible to describe uh, a being without the pure fact of being without consciousness, without existence? And he will do this by giving concrete examples from human life, which falls short of being. So. He, he has this fascinating insight which is called Ilya, Il, the third person singular, he, she, it, I, the adverb there, and A from the verb to have, avoir, translated into English as the there is. And so uh, I think I was looking for a Filipino term, maybe the term would be Tao or Rao or kuno because it is he wants to stress impersonality he wants to stress anonymity in other words he wants to stress this idea where uh, there is there's not nothing but there's no yet particular unique being there is only ilia it's a very difficult notion and therefore this table has appeared because this table has pushed the ilia down and 
And so, the emergence into being is the conquest of Ilya. And so, by that Ilya, uh, Levinas actually doubles Heidegger's dynamism. There is a kind of emergence from Ilya, and later on, emerging from Ilya into being, there is, there is needed a new emergence because for Levinas, unlike Hamlet, the question is not to be or not to be. Being Nice as a background. That's Ilya, I think. <laughs> All right. So uh, the the I think what he's discussing here is uh, impersonality, anonymity. In other words, he's discussing the fear of being, which is the counterpart of Heidegger's fear of nothing. If Heidegger is afraid of death. Levinas is trying to point out that there are people who are afraid to be. In other words, afraid to take on responsibility, afraid to take on authority, afraid to take the initiative. So uh, it's very important, therefore, to emerge in order to be. And therefore, from the very beginning, therefore, there is this movement which you should watch out in reading Levinas. There is always a going out, an escape, an evasion, instead of an invasion, a going beyond, an escape from being, a kind of, uh, in other words, the, the, what he is trying to tell us here is the experience of being chained to being, of being riveted to being, of being nailed to being. And therefore, he's trying to make us see that perhaps the point of life is not to always get. You know, when, when we are babies, we are, we are told to, I think, I see that and I must have experienced that. We are told to close our hand and open, closed, open, closed, open. I think Levinas is trying to tell us, open, open, go beyond. In other words, the image that comes to my mind comes from a very noted love teacher from Ateneo. Uh, Onofre Pagsanghan called Pagsi. He says, life is like a tube of toothpaste. You must push the toothpaste out. It is about giving your substance. Emptying being means emptying your substance. And he will write about that. He will give an example in On Escape. Uh, the example would be and this is quite, uh, I like wine a lot, and there is that moment when you drink wine that you feel you're drifting, your substance is going out, but that is only an illusion because that is not the real going out, so it's not the real escape. The, the escape is to escape, to empty oneself, and so, in that book, he's trying to, to, to explore. I don't think he knows that the escape is towards the other. And so you must be very careful in teaching Levinas because people sometimes short circuit him. They immediately say, it's the other, it's the face. No, take time. You have to build it up because he doesn't even know at this point where it is going, all he knows is that one must get out because one cannot stay in being because his me the meaning of being is a pure reference to self, a pure affirmation of self, a pure positivity of being. And 
it's being full of oneself, so full that you know you you cannot uh, you cannot you can no longer release yourself. Uh, I think the the best example here would be to work so hard. You are tired at night, and there's a tiredness which is good. There's a happiness of a tiredness which is good. Because according to St. Thomas, all you have to do is get a warm shower and good sleep, and you are refreshed again the next day. That's very good advice. Okay, so, uh, this idea of replenishing oneself. Um, and so, uh, if I may quote from On Escape, because we have to also, um, he says in On Escape, to escape being is the need to get out of oneself, that is, to break that most radical and unalterably binding of chains, the fact that the I, the moi, the I, is oneself. In other words, why am I just myself? Why this self, this self, I could be better. There's something better than just being. That is the first term. And uh, uh, so, just to tie it up with Ilya, the reason why he is interested, therefore, in Ilya is because Ilya is a kind of a uniformity, and the reason why he is interested in uniformity is because he wants to show a new meaning of the subject, that to be a subject, to be a human subject, is to emerge from Ilya, and with Ilya, to emerge from Ilya means to be separated, to be expelled from being. And so the next term is uh, I think I've, I've spoken of this. The, um, this is Ilya, just a uh, repeat. It is the, uh, he's trying to, uh, to describe the subject from its absence. There's no subject, but he's able to do that. He is doing a phenomenology of something without consciousness. And he does it in a kind of a lateral way. And he's trying to show this impersonality, anonymity, the dread of being, the dread to, uh, to get out of being. And so, to be to 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 emerge from Ilya is to be separated. In other words, and atheism. Uh, the reason why I put atheism there is because in 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 coming to be, I emerge by coiling into myself, and the way I maintain myself is by taking something from the outside and assimilating it into myself. So I become independent by depending on something outside of me. And uh, what, what Levinas is trying is here, it is very important to notice here, that in this coiling, in this individuating of myself, the self is ignorant, it's deaf to the other, it's deaf to the other. In other words, uh, there's a kind of ignorance and deafness to the other, and the other here, the human other, and the infinite other. So uh, Levinas is very different, therefore, from Kierkegaard, because in Kierkegaard, uh, in fear and trembling, there is this 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 uh, this awareness of self, which can only be aware in relation to God. But Levinas does not have that. It is death to the other. It's just 
uh, it's ignorant of the other because I am preoccupied with trying to maintain myself. In other words, it's which not it's not yet egoism. It's it's a good kind of egoism. It's like the child who splutters his face with uh, later on uh, with Jewish sauce. He's he's just busy eating the spaghetti and he doesn't care if he, his face is dirty. What he's having is. I think what Levinas is showing us here, it's, it's a joy to live. We, the first emergence, the first experience of life is naive, uh, innocent enjoyment. It's good to breathe. Uh, for, you do not say, I will breathe. No, it's good uh, because in eating, I'm not only enjoying myself, I have the food, I am enjoying myself as well. And so, you can apply that uh, in work, for instance. While I, in, in enjoying my work, I am also enjoying myself. So there is a kind of reflexivity of life. Life enjoys life by living itself. So this is what is called uh, Jewish songs. Uh, it is happy enjoyment. Uh, if I if I consume all the chocolates in the box, it's not because I, I'm not yet egoistic, because I'm not yet aware of the other. The other is not yet there for me. If I start hiding, then maybe the other has appeared, and therefore I am afraid that the other might take part in eating my box of chocolates. <coughs> And so, this, this can go on. Can I go out here? I prefer. So, this thing of this, this going out, which is a coming back, <coughs> this going out to the other, but always taking something from the other. And he will give the two models uh, of Abraham and Ulysses. Uh, he will say Western culture and civilization uh, where you go out but it's always about development of the self. It's always about getting something for yourself. The reason why you're interested in the other is because the other has notes on Levinas and therefore maybe after class you can borrow her notes on Levinas. Okay? Uh, but there is another way of going out which is walalang, for nothing, because you visit, because you really like to visit, because it is for the other as other, like Abraham. So this idea of, uh, so he's, he's, he will try to show us that uh, we can adopt this, either the view of totality, this going out which comes back, or the going out which does not return. And I think there is a distinction there. It's very uh, apparent in French because uh, the, the objective other, the impersonal other, like a table, is autre. But the human other is autrui, the human other. So it could happen that uh, I dominate, I master objects, but there is this experience whereby I come upon a reality which suddenly says, stop, hold. You cannot proceed the way you are doing. You cannot. And this will be the experience of the other as face. In other words, uh, here he's going to show us the experience of the other as face. It is as if uh, to see the face is to hear the command, thou shalt not kill. So there is in Levinas this metaphysical experience which he combines the two senses, 
in seeing the face, we hear the ethical command, thou shalt not kill. And we should be very careful that the face is not just this part here. The face is metonymic. It stands for the entire being. In fact, even the back of the neck, uh, because he gives the example of this woman who was lining up to visit her husband in prison, you, you can read the anxiety on the, on the back of her neck. So the face is both visible and invisible because what he wants us to, to really see and experience is this reality outside of any context. To meet someone, we don't care whether it's young or old, male or female, black or white, rich or poor, okay, drug addict or professor, it doesn't matter. It's, it's this ability, and I hope you, you cultivate that ability, the ability to meet one person from one human being to another human being. There should be no hesitation, you know, like uh, sometimes you wonder whether education has not prevented us like to, to deal with the tricycle driver the way we deal with an ambassador. Why should there be they're both human beings. Why should there be a difference? Uh, we are all... Uh, I was reading uh, an article where a five-year-old asked his father, his father, what is the color uh, below the skin? What is our color? Everybody has the same color. The color of the skin is only skin deep. So, uh, so this face, therefore, has to be understood very well. And, and so, uh, the face there, he, he's, he's, he's very, uh, very careful to note that the face, it's as if, it's because it is commanding, it's commanding from on high, it is elevated. But at the same time, this other here is also miserable. And not only, uh, sometimes, we sh not only economically miserable, uh, I think uh, even the rich, you know, sometimes when we say rich or poor, we always mean economically rich or economically poor. Um, we, we sometimes apologize that we are economically poor, but the economically poor may be very rich in values. The economically rich may be poor in ethical values. Or uh, So it's a different mix. So uh, it is the other for whom I can do something. So uh, the, this is really where... Uh, I guess people will have difficulty because we have often been trained to, to think of responsibility after freedom. First, yes, I am responsible for what I do, but why should I be responsible for what I did not do, for what I do not do? So Levinas here is telling us that we are responsible for the acts and the faults of the others very hard to accept immediately because why should I do that? Uh, when I was dean, I was called the dean who picked trash because uh, if I saw trash there, I said, could you please pick that up? Uh, this broken bottle, the, the garbage there is just beside you. And the colleague would say, it's not mine, sir. <laughs> so I would just pick it up for her. So. I think I was called the Basura Dean, okay, so, uh, because a Dean, by the way, a Dean is diaconos, he's a glorified janitor, so if you want to become Dean, uh, be prepared to become 
a glorified janitor because he will pick up the trash that people, the mess, fix up the mess that people leave behind, put out the fires that people put on for you. Okay? It's not a, or being chair is like that. It's not pleasant. Um, uh, maybe you'll have questions afterwards, but I, I just want to. And so, uh, this is for what I do not do. And uh, I, I was talking about pushing, pushing a, a, an idea to such an extent that it becomes, uh, he, suddenly he pushes the responsibility so much that he talks of responsibility as substitution, which means that it's not about my taking on the responsibility, that even before I will it, it is already upon me. In other words, it is a resignation without consent. Uh, in other words, by, uh, by being exposed to the other, I can no longer say yes or no. Of course, I, I can say, I can, I cannot accept. So, he speaks of, uh, it is as if the, uh, there is an obsession by the other. I, he uses actually hyperbolical language, it's persecution by the other. It's as if the, I cannot escape the other already because the other is in front of me. In other words, uh, Levinas wants us to put ourselves in place of the other, but no one can take our place. He wants to, to show that this responsibility is unshakable, it's inalienable. So this is what he means by substitution. Um, here we come, so uh, we come into the more difficult parts here. Uh, what it's the the going beyond being is not being otherwise. It is otherwise than being. And, uh, and therefore, uh, this, I, I think we, we can backtrack a bit. The, the human other, just by the mere fact that the human other is not determined by the I, the other, the human other, can already be called infinite. And I, I should tell you that Simone de Beauvoir, uh, the mother of all feminists, immediately objected when Levinas uh, said this uh, in 1948 uh, because she misunderstood Levinas. She thought that Levinas was pushing again for a traditional view of of women, but what Levinas was trying to do was to put in a positive light the, what, what, what we call the passivity, quotation marks, but it's a different kind of passivity which is not the opposite of activity. So this, this otherwise than being, so the, uh, the face is already referring to the otherwise than being, uh, in other words, it's already, in a sense, showing God, but not by not God showing itself. Uh, this is very important. In other words, uh, God shows Himself by not showing Himself. He's going to stress so much this transcendence up to absence that He says. The human other is not the incarnation of the infinite. Okay? It's a trace. Okay? So, uh, yeah, God is there, but He is there by not being, uh, by not being there. And, and so, He will talk about this very uh, difficult uh, word called ileite, that God you can never capture God, you can never grasp God, uh, that God is not captured in, 
in, emo in religious emotion nor in the discourse of theology or philosophy. His transcendence is a kind of absence. It's the presence of an absence. And I hope uh, teachers are able to explain this presence of an absence. A very important idea in the philosophy of religion. expresses the infinite insofar as it detaches itself from being and its modes insofar as it as it is not simply a being otherwise so uh, it is not the causa sui it's not uh, so so it's very important to realize here that this otherwise and being shows itself by not showing itself among beings. It's, a, it's not a phenomenon. And uh, the reason why he, uh, he wants that is to, uh, I, I think, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's going, uh, I think the otherwise than being, it is, it is, it will be manifested uh, in the in the desire uh, because I think he's going to talk also about uh, why why this escape from being because uh, the human being is so structured that there is a kind of internal antagonism in him that at the same time that he constitutes himself there is this experience that he must get out of himself. There is this internal conflict. There is this desire, which is very important. The contrast between desire and need. A need is something to fill you up. But a desire, you know, a human life is a desire, in other words. It's a being taken out. You need the other. Uh, well, you the, the other takes you out. It's not. It's not just. Uh, it does not just depend on you. So this uh, this desire which uh, feeds on its hunger. There's this desire which. Uh, it's not the accumulation of things. It's. Uh, it's. It's really. Uh, the goodness which overflows it's by doing it's by doing the good that you desire to do more good because you can never say I have done enough good otherwise you become a Pharisee and so uh, Levinas will say that he's not afraid to use the word God, I'm not afraid of the word God, he says. He does not hesitate to name transcendence as God. Uh, and so it's not, uh, it's, he's not talking about this perfect and powerful being, causa sui, cause of itself and of all being. It's not the God of all philosophers, neither the God of Abraham. Joseph, uh, Jacob and Isaac it's not a it's not a presence it's not an interlocutor uh, this God is holy yeah, because there is an important distinction in Levinas between holiness and the sacred 
To be holy is to be separated. You cannot touch it. You cannot look at it. Otherwise, you die. And so, uh, it's not even the presence of the human other. It's, it's the, as I said, the human other is not the incarnation of God. So he's neither a concept, he's neither a substance, uh, and yet he, this God is also not irrational. This God has to do with philosophy, because when God comes to mind, he ruptures the mind. There's a book entitled, When God Comes to Mind. So, uh, so this, this uh, this God, therefore, uh, is, is in absolute separation um, and therefore he wants to avoid, he wants to avoid the, uh, the risk of trying to say, because it's very dangerous when people say God is on our side or it's very dangerous when your superior tells you uh, according to God you have to leave the seminary. Uh, I, I don't think he has the cell phone number of God, so... Uh, I mean, I think at least he should say, according to God as interpreted by me, a finite being. Uh, so he wants to avoid, he wants to avoid therefore, this contamin this idea of usurping God, grasping God, uh, he wants to preserve really the transcendence of God. That this is a holy God, and uh, that it's a God that not in the f religious sentiments, but not in concepts. It's that uh, he escapes. You know, if the face escapes all context, more so this God. Um, I think uh, I've spoken a bit about this desire which is nourished by its own hunger. So it's not a it's not a frustrating thing to have this desire because it's a different kind of desire. Uh, it feeds on its own hunger, and uh, I think justice. Uh, this will be more fully explored by Professor Burgrave, but. This is where uh, I think we make a mistake if we stop with, with Levinas between I and the other because there are many others. And so he has a very full-blown social, political, ethical philosophy. And in fact, uh, if at the beginning we say, we seem to say, uh, but what about me? Is there no responsibility for me? I think it is the entrance of the third party that saves us from the persecution of the other. Then there will be justice because there will have to, we will have to compare the incomparable. Um, and finally, I think my, my last term... Um, what does he mean by ethics? So, it's not the name of a philosophical branch, the name of a discipline for Levinas. Ethics is the experience of the other as face. It's the ordeal. It is to experience this reality which tells me, which obliges me not to kill him, to take care of him, to care for him, not to let him be alone. So, uh, this reality therefore, ethics, is this experience where there is a reality that puts me into question, that tells me you cannot do that. You are, um, as uh, Victor Hugo in Ernani says, uh, there's a quote there, the human being can behave like a force which comes, like a force which says, Alice Jan, get away, I'm coming. It's not like that. 
there is this reality which says, no, you cannot do that. And yet, this reality, of course, is a force with no force. It's not ontological. It is ethical. And so, ethics is the philosophical discourse which stands for this uh, ordeal where I really see the singular in its flesh, in its uniqueness. Uh, and this is the, uh, what he calls ethics here. Um, it, it's, so the, the ethics is this great command, uh, thou shalt not kill, uh, which comes from the concreteness, the singular concreteness of the face from the other. Uh, there's no for it's not like Kant, there's no formalism in it. It's a very, it's a sensitive, it's a non-theoretical experience. And uh, it is the experience of true passivity, more passive than the passivity opposite activity, where I finally see that there is an other, the other, who is my true self, because to be really me is to say, me here for you. By self, I can only become my true self by becoming the self of the other, the self of all the others. I have five minutes left, but I think I can take questions if you... Uh, thank you for your...